are on the road to Kiela in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, 200 kilometers west of Kinshasa in Congo Central. Yes, dear beetle lovers, that's an interesting journey we are doing in search of a rare and interesting habitat for flower beetles. Now we enter the place where we find this habitat. It's in the middle of a school campus ground. Originally, this uh, missionary station was built 100 years ago um, for Belch missionaries. It's in the original condition. Nobody ever renovated these buildings. And that's also one of the problems for the school here. Around 700 children go to primary school here and we are interested especially in this building here and in this window up there. That's the school bell because the old original bell of the church fell down 40 years ago. One day a week the children are working outside in the garden. That's the refectory. And this is the director of the school uh, talking to Augusta Konda that you see on the left. Yes, and that is also the reason uh, why I have been there because Augusta Konda and me, we are working together in a project for the domestication of edible caterpillars of big saturnid mosses in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. There is a book uh, already written about this project called Mbinzo. Mbinzo is the name in Kikongo for all edible caterpillars and it's a unique project in the world. We try to find out if there are some wild species of uh, collected edible caterpillars that we can uh, produce uh, in an agricultural process. That's uh, uh, the idea behind mm, Binzo. And Augusta Konda, that you see here uh, on the left, talking to the director of the school to the right. Originally, he went to school here uh, 50 years ago. Uh, that's uh, um, and probably then the school was in a little bit better shape than today because, as I said, nobody ever renovated uh, one single uh, brick of this school. So, but we are not interested in the school itself, but in a special habitat for flower beetles. We used a ladder for that, yes, to come to this habitat and. As you can guess, we want to get up somewhere. And we have to get to this place via the roof of the rectorate, the white room underneath this rusty corrugated iron roof, up to the windows up there. And here's a, a view of the rectorate and you can see the poor conditions uh, for the teacher and for the children at school here. And we have to say also that nobody uh, goes to school for free. The parents have to pay around hundred dollars a year for their children to go to primary school. That's why only 50% of the children here can go to school. What they are doing now, it's also a process that they do every around one month and with which they can earn some money for the school. So what are they doing here? You hear this noise? Where does it come from? This noise. From the floor. <coughs> ah, over there, there. Yeah. Uh -uh. Some <laughs> are here. Already, but they hide. Uh -huh. 
On the other side, there should be more the same. You see the, the holes in this corrugated iron roof. Now that should be renovated here, otherwise it will not last uh, not 20 years. Then I, one of the children took the camera and now you see here all these bats crawling around because they are hidden here during the day and they only go out in the night because this is a species that eats insects and, and uh, collects them during the night outside and they come to these to these two windows to their sleeping places here of course now when children are up there they are very nervous that's why they create also this sound But it's interesting that they don't fly during the day. They can. They, it seems that they cannot fly uh, when there's too much light. Only during the night. So that, that's why the people uh, are up here. They collect the guano of this, the guano of these uh, bats on the ground because it's a very, very rich fertilizer for the fields. But we actually do not use this guano for a field in Kriloeka where the project Binso um, is done, but we use it for, as a fertilizer for a tilapia pond that we have built there. But that's a hard work for the children up here in the dust of this uh, bat guano. They do it around once a month and they can earn some money because the people around this place. They know that it's a good fertilizer and they come here uh, to buy it. Guano of bats is a, a very rich fertilizer, but also you have to say that the content of the guano um, varies a lot uh, depending on the species and depending on the things that the bats eat, because there are bats that eat uh, fruits um, that have another content in the guano then the bats like here that eat insects the insect eating bat guano is the best you can have because it contains a lot more phosphorus than other bat guanos and because it's such a rich substrate it's not uh, a dead substrate no it's uh, a living material there are hundreds of species of insect larvae that feed uh, in the guano of bats, so that's why this habitat is um, a very rare and it's uh, a very rich and you should protect all the bat habitats that you can, not only for the bat, but also for the big amount and plenty of uh, species of insects that live together with the bats in these roofs. So that was um, the first moment to collect all the guano from this roof and uh, later on we found the larvae of the Cetonid beetles that we were looking uh, for in this aquarium. But first we have to come down <laughs> this roof to bring the bags of guano to us here you see the campground again from another uh, angle and it's a really dangerous place to walk on this rusty uh, roof in the school in Kielo especially for the teacher not for the children it's interesting that the bats live here already more than 50 years because uh, Augusta Kondo remembers that also in his time when he went to school here they already had this bat cave up there where they collected the guano. So it's an important thing to protect this habitat also that it can stay as it is. Il y en a beaucoup.
It all works is done for today and let's see what we find inside the guano here. Of course it's a, a smelly material but it's pretty dry and here you see the first larva of a setonid uh, beetle. <laughs> the teacher says it's an edible insect, but probably not in this substrate because it's really smelly. As you can see here, a lot of larvas inside this guano, and of course the chicken, they like them, and they are very eager to pick them up from this substrate. A lot of darkling beetle larvas, of course, in this, these substrates. There's, and that's the flower beetle inside, it's of course a Pachnoda species, but it's difficult to say which um, species in the Pachnoda group because there are over 100 species of this Pachnoda flower beetles that uh, live only in Africa. So, and when you go to the internet you have a big collection of possibilities what it could be. The most common is the marginata, Pachnoda marginata, that is, uh, or this sinuata here that you can see, but it's not a sinuata and it's not a marginata. They are sold in, in pet shops as food for other uh, animals like reptiles. And it's also not a marginata originally from, from the Congo. It must be another species, but it's also not emula like that you can see. Uh, here, so at the moment I do not know exactly what kind of species it is, but uh, Benjamin Haring told me he will ask Peter Malik, a specialist from uh, the Czech Slovakia, he's an expert in this field and I hope that soon we will uh, be able to give you the name of this insect. And that's why we use this fertilizer to fertilize the Pilapia pond. And here you can see some of the larvas in this uh, bat guano that I brought to Kilueka. Uh, here in the subject you see the larvas. It's interesting that they feed in a material that is so rich of uh, nitrogen and so rich of other materials. You know, it's like a, a dung beetle in a way. Huh? So you, here see the pupil chamber glued to the side of the plastic box. And inside of this uh, pupil chambers, you find this uh, nice pachnoda. We will soon know probably what kind of species it is from our friends around the world that like to rear and breed and collect uh, beetles like this one that you can uh, see here. Thanks for watching. If you want to know the name, probably I write it underneath as soon as I know from Peter Malek or at the end of the videos and if you are interested in the book it's already translated to French originally written in German and this year it should be published also in English go to skyfood.ch you will see there an online order um, place where you can order these books thanks for watching bye bye